Hi, this is Neil from EA Media. Sorry, having a bit of a bug problem. Which reminds me, wanted to tell you about a new worm that uh, they announced at Black Hat. By the way, while you're on the EA Media YouTube channel, don't forget to subscribe. That way you can help grow the EA Media community. Oh, hold on one sec. Well, now that I've dealt with my bug problem, let's talk worms. You know, it's been a while since I've heard of a worm showing up amongst the various malware that keeps getting announced. Ransomware? That's the malware of the day. Viruses? I don't think those will ever go away. But worms? I haven't heard of one in quite a while. But down at Black Hat, Exodus Intelligence announced a new worm or remote exploit that they had developed. And it's a doozy. It makes use of cell phone Wi-Fi. Now, in case you aren't aware what the definition of worm is, it's a piece of malware that doesn't require any human interaction to execute. It doesn't make any assumptions about the target it's attacking. And it can't be detected by the target. In short, it self-propagates, making use of an exploit on its target. But in this case, its target are cell phones. Cell phones have been much more secure than any other device for the very simple reason that the underlying operating systems learned from the past mistakes of workstation or server operating systems and were designed from the outset to be secure. This goes for both Android and iOS devices, even though they have slightly different approaches. Plus, the cell phone manufacturers are using communication chips that have been hardened and have protections of their own. Generally. I say generally because, in the case of Broadpawn, the exploit makes use of vulnerabilities in the underlying Wi-Fi controller chip from Broadcom that doesn't have the usual checks and balances that you see in other chips. There's no randomization use of memory going on and a lack of protection from buffer overflows. It also makes use of a flaw in the Wi-Fi protocol 802.11. For this exploit to work, you start off by setting up a malicious Wi-Fi access point. The cell phone will automatically connect to an unauthorized Wi-Fi access point and if the chip used is from Broadcom, the cell phone is owned. It's just that easy. So a couple things about this. First, this goes back to a product, in this case the Broadcom chipset, not being designed with security in mind. As a result, anything built on top of it becomes exposed. And that goes back to having a proper secure development life cycle. The second thing is that if you have a cell phone, don't have it set to automatically connect to the nearest access point. And finally, if you are going to connect to a Wi-Fi access point and you don't have to provide authentication, be very cautious. This is like having sex with a stranger. If you don't know your partner, you don't know what diseases you're going to pick up. At least say hi and tell each other your names. One last thing to remember about this particular malware is that a couple of things had to have occurred for it to have been successful. You had to have a chipset that had security issues, and you had to have a protocol that had a bug in it. Two things that, by themselves, couldn't be leveraged on their own, but put together, and you had the makings of a worm. And having a combination of the things occurring now seems to be the way that exploits are being made. Remember Stuxnet? Well, that was a two-step process because the Iranian systems they were accessing were secure of and by themselves. But by leveraging a couple of issues, the U.S. was able to bypass their security layers. So for you budding security architects out there, my gut says that security in layers isn't necessarily good enough anymore. Attacks will now think in terms of multiple steps to access the crown jewels and not just look for single points of entry. So you have to make the assumption that each layer will be breached on its own, regardless of how far it is from the outer edge. 
That means monitoring will become very key, and I would also suggest that somehow you should be adding a randomization element somewhere that can't be counted on by attackers. It's a whole new way to think about security architecture. I'm just wondering what that new design pattern is going to turn into. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you like it, take a look at some of the other videos that we have on our YouTube channel, or you can go to our website at ea.media to check the videos out there. I'm Neil Rarep. Sorry about my bug issue at the beginning, and I hope that helps.